We uh, I'd like to bring this back to order here. Uh, I'm not sure we're in disorder before we left, but uh, we'd like to continue with the program this afternoon. And we're this uh, breakout session is talking about uh, safety and transportation uh, of uh, uh, used nuclear fuel. I'll pick up on that. And uh, we have uh, several representatives from Nye County here and uh, uh, Gary Hollis, uh, Cash Jazrick. Uh, Dennis Maltz is one of the advisors to the uh, U.S. Nuclear Energy Foundation. Uh, we chat with him, and he happens to have a, a doctorate in uh, nuclear physics. And uh, Shinofen uh, is the current uh, vice chairman of the Nye County uh, uh, commission down there, and they're the, uh, in the immediate proximity of the uh, Yucca Mountain facility. So uh, we're going to turn it over to them and uh, let them rock and roll from here. Thank you. Looks like it's on. There it is. All right. Uh, my name is Dan Shinhoven. Um, Vice Chair of the Nye County Commission. I'm nuclear liaison to nuclear waste issues and also chairman of the Regional Transportation Commission for Nye County. Uh, Yucca Mountain isn't in the proximity. We are the host county, uh, and we're happy to be the host county. Um, many of you may be wondering why I'm on this panel. I've asked myself that, especially after you've read the bios. I have one line. Everybody else has many things they've accomplished. I do have a bachelor's in theology, so if you want to talk religion, we can do that. Anything, <laughs> anything I know about Yucca Mountain, I learned from our brain trust. Uh, that's what I call them. Cash is part of that. Um, Dr. Michael Vogel, Daryl Lacey, here in the audience. Um, and, m and my concerns with this are uh, immediate, as all three of my children own homes in Nye County, in Pahrump, and uh, four grandchildren growing up there. So before I was elected, I did a little homework. Um, and now uh, we're waiting for the safety evaluation reports so we can move forward. I'm not going to talk long because there's people much more intelligent, but I do want to say thank you to Mr. DeWarty uh, for having us, and thank you all for being here. And I want to thank uh, former Commissioner Gary Hollis, who uh, mentored me my first two years on the board and brought me along uh, in the uh, Yucca Mountain strategies we're using. Um, and mostly that's, gee, let's follow the law. You know, this country is a nation of laws, or was, um, until last week. Um, and so we're looking forward to the safety evaluation reports to be released. We're glad we won that lawsuit, and uh, we're looking forward to that moving forward. I think the last thing I'll say is I, I have an analogy, which actually two things. Early on you uh, said that you're going to bust myths um, the biggest myth I continually come across is uh, if Yucca Mountain opens up, suddenly we're going to be a, uh, a dump for the nation's nuclear waste. You ever heard of Area 5? Uh -huh. We already have it. And so the uh, highly low-level waste that uh, DOE now wants to send there should probably by rights go in a repository. Um, but we haven't said no to that either as a county. We, we've uh, asked for their science. We've had our guys look it over and we're looking for proper mitigation. So Nye County is, has never been an obstacle. Uh, we've always uh, looked forward to working with the state and DOE uh, moving forward. And the last is the other example I use for people. Um, and I, again, I hold no degrees. I don't know any of this stuff. So I just use kind of common sense. And uh, this seems like a good analogy for Yucca Mountain. A bunch of promoters decide to run a marathon in Denver, and it's a 25-mile marathon, and at 24.9 miles, the promoters run out on the course and stop everybody, and oh, hold on, hold on, we're going to start all over in Arizona. So let's go down to Arizona, and you all can start back at the starting line, and we'll see what happens. How many of those people want to run that race, do you think? So uh, with that, I turn it over to our next person, and uh, I'll hope to answer any questions you might have later. Uh, Mr. Moltz. Dr. Moltz, sorry. Um, just it, my resume is in there, my brief resume, and that's fairly accurate. I've got 150 publications in nuclear physics. So um, 
about 80 of which are refereed, which means that it goes through a process where some other physicist says, oh, oh this guy knows what he's talking about or he doesn't. Um, but one of the things that, unfortunately, um, an, another scientist, a nuclear engineering professor that from University of Missouri, Rolla, was not able to be here. I was just informed he was sick. That's why he's not here, which is too bad. But uh, he, he and I have talked, and w there was a Gary sent out a notice today about something, and I, I was about somebody put something how dangerous nuclear is. So I, I'm going to just quote one line that I wrote back, and, and Nick Stephanidis, who's the gentleman's sick, um, said he really thought that was a great analogy. So I'm just going to share that one line with you, and that is, is that what people are worried about is safety. I said, D how many people in over 20,000 man years of reactors work have been hurt in the United States? We don't know of a single casualty, even Three Mile Island. In fact, the joke was, of course, Three Mile Island happened, was that more people died in uh, Massachusetts in a car accident um, that year, one, than have ever died in a nuclear reactor accident in the United States. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's why Teddy Kennedy never became president. But um, the other thing is, is that how many people have died due to coal mining accidents? Well, it's in the thousands. I don't know the exact number, but it's in the thousands. How many people have died due eating fatty foods at, at, at fast food restaurants like, let's just say, it starts with an M? Um, it's probably millions. So let's put things in perspective. I think it's all been very relevant to, yeah, I mean, Nye County needs, this is a tax base. Why not give them a tax? Not just the state of Nevada, why not give Nye County something for, for you know, for helping monitor? But let a company or a private, whatever, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna discuss that part. Just let some organization that knows how to run it, whether it's an existing corporation or a formed one or whatever, there's a lot of expertise out there. There are, one of the things that's happened in the last few years is that due to ineptitude of uh, the federal government, um, many, many scientists from, from Lawrence Livermore, Lawrence, Los Alamos National Lab, Lawrence Berkeley have been forced to retire at very young. So there's a huge pool of people that have vast nuclear experience available, and they're not that old. They're sick in their early 60s. They're available instantly. They would gladly do it. So we have a vast pool, and we need to start utilizing this for, to help solve our nuclear problem in this country. My name is Cash Joshik. I work for Nye County. I worked, uh, I spent 30 years in the Air Force, and my last tour of duty was the liaison to the Department of Energy for the Nevada test site, Yucca Mountain, in the range complex. In the process of doing that, I ended up getting involved in what started to be transportation across the range complex through the area known as Area 51 and wrote the position papers for the Air Force as to why that probably wasn't a good idea. And one thing led to the next, and when I retired, I went to work for uh, Booz Allen Hamilton as an advisor to the federal staff at DOE, Interinstitutional Affairs Office, and then in 2002 or thereabouts, I ended up going to work for, offered my services to and went to work for Nye County because in 2002, the site was officially designated over the objections of the state of Nevada. And as part of the staff working on transportation issues, our job was to, f uh, was to find ways to implement this program. If it was going to be in Nye County, we wanted the people to that worked at Yucca Mountain to live in Nye County, and we wanted the, the business and industries associated with, with the repository to be located in proximity to the repository. And for every and not and working on the assumption that transportation could be done and done safely, and the other assumption that the majority of the material would be shipped by rail. That was a decision, a record of decision, by the Department of Energy. We went about studying the routes. There were initially five different routes that would have taken uh, the material off the mainline road, uh, railroads, and moved them to Yucca Mountain. And then there's the, the highways. And for all the opposition of going through the Las Vegas Valley, we basically ended up having a solution, uh, finding a way to uh, do it, uh, to do the uh, transportation and do it in such a manner that those uh, concerns could be alleviated. 
the point being is that when you're trying to solve a problem and you're looking for solutions, you can find them. If you're looking for reasons to oppose things, you can continue to do that. So setting that aside, our, our uh, planning process took us to a north-south railroad, a one that connected the Reno area to southern Las Vegas, southern Nevada, uh, preferably to a point somewhere on I-15 at the California-Nevada border. And when we did our rail uh, study survey on that, we ended up finding out that if you, did, if you didn't even talk about Yucca Mountain, the uh, economic development opportunities associated with a railroad that went the length and breadth of the state of Nevada to the west of US 95, you would end up with about $204 million of annual economic development capability. If you use the, uh, the, road, the route that DOE actually selected because of it's the path of least resistance, politically expedient, uh, and uh, suboptimal decision, well, which is what DOE continually got forced into, the, that was only worth like $60 million a year. And the kind of things that, that were happening there, and whether you liked it or not, the survey took care of looking for the transportation of materials um, from a lot of them in Mineral County, actually, the old mines where you could have salvage re research operations where you could take waste material from a conventional com commercial waste from the San Francisco, Oakland area, put it on rail cars, process that material, and have it. And that was the majority of it. So th those were the those were the, a lot of the considerations that went into that being Nye County's uh, preference for rail alignment to move material to Yucca Mountain. And ironically, if they were to have a serious conversation with you. Our friends that that work for the Nevada Commission on Nuclear Projects would share that with you from that perspective. But as long as Nevada and, the, and Clark County were going to object, the answer is they didn't want any railroads. And the same thing was true of, of highways, because the as you're probably well aware, the I-11 corridor, which is a new a new study of uh, moving material from Mexico to Phoenix to Las Vegas to Reno and points north. Guess what? All that alignment and all the opportunities of funding, if we were to sit down as Nevadans and prioritize the kind of things we want, we could probably have a lot of those opportunities. But transportation could be done safely. You could avoid the Las Vegas Valley, uh, which is a, a, an emotional concern, uh, not a realistic one, because the transportation is, uh, we were working on the assumption that it was safe, and there are other people who know and know that better than I. and. Like I said, we would literally then build, uh, to start out with, uh, extend the four lane from Las Vegas, which now goes out to the test site at Mercury, and go all the way to Lathrop Wells. And that, that uh, extension would allow you to, during the building process, to uh, uh, move materials because the major location for the, for the acceptance of of construction materials for Yucca Mountain would have come through and would and probably will come through Las Vegas. But every time we tried to uh, have a discussion about those kind of things, the state state's opposition was we're not going to do that. And oh, by the way, you can't even talk to NDOT, the Nevada Department of Transportation, about those kind of things. So in the context of planning for the infrastructure to for successful implementation of the program itself, we looked at transportation, looked at w ways to maximize the opportunities for all Nevadans, north, south, east, and west, and both from a rail perspective and the highway perspective. And for each and every concern that those people opposed to Yucca Mountain would, would uh, lay on a table if you were looking for solutions, they're out there. And we believe we had a good plan to do so, which would include a building, for lack of a better term, if you're familiar with uh, Summerlin in Las Vegas, you know it's it was master plan community. We would have we had those that all those things were started and well well in progress uh, while we were while the program was rocking and rolling along. In 2010, when this administration chose to uh, uh, chose to find the process as uh, the Yucca Mountain is unworkable. We took exception to that, and that's where we now find ourselves today is how do we get past the unworkable to the 
we can work it and be glad to answer questions when you have an opportunity. I'm Gary Hollis, and uh, I want to make something very clear. I am no longer a commissioner, and I do not speak for Nye County. <coughs> uh, I was asked a, a, a question by uh, Congressman Shimp back in uh, 2011. Was Nye County always supportive of the process? I think that Nye County was in support of the project, but they were neutral up until 2002. And then uh, the commissioners started taking an active role because we knew that if we don't do something, they're just going to do what they want to. And we didn't want that to happen. We wanted to engage these people. We wanted to come up with good, solid programs. And we did that. Um, first experiment was uh, uh, a scientific uh, project uh, on the TBM that was actually mining the tunnel. And it was humidity, uh, wind, dust, and so on. Uh, the next was uh, Ernie, uh, uh, the early, uh, what is it now? What is it? Yeah, yeah early warning drilling program. Um, I, you know, uh, we tested water out there. We drilled 40 holes all around the Yucca Mountain. Uh, we drilled probably 40,000 feet of drill holes. And now, uh, in the, when the uh, DOE was doing their licensing application, they took Nye County's data and used it in the licensing program. Uh, this is, you know, I don't, I don't understand uh, our congressman's uh, mentality of what he's thinking about, but uh, uh, at one time, I know there was $300 million, up to $500 million to the state uh, for getting on board. Uh, maybe they got more money than we thought they had, but uh, anyway, uh, uh, be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Um, just a couple more comments, if you don't mind, and then we'll open for questions. Um, the uh, currently, as I mentioned, Area 5, currently uh, low-level waste goes through Pahrump, uh which is the largest... Uh, town in about 38,000 people. And we know that uh, without the rail, uh, some of the, the high-level waste uh, will, high-level used fuel, excuse me, will go through Pahrump too. And we, and we have issues. We have roads, uh, state highways that need to be improved there. So, you know, we are looking for that. Uh, uh, you know, our job, Gary's job when he was a commissioner too, and, and we took it very seriously as uh, public health and safety. So we're really looking forward to hearing the SERs and uh, and putting this to bed, you know. Uh, let's hear the SERs. Let's see if it's safe to construct and operate safely and move forward. And we believe, those of us who've, uh, uh, well, I've been schooled by the gentlemen who know, uh, I believe it's safe. And I, I know, again, I have four, uh, three children and four grandchildren growing up in uh, Pahrump. So if I had any doubts this was safe, I would, I would be the first one to stop it. And uh, I'm just appalled that, uh, I know I'm not supposed to say these things, but I will anyway. I'm just appalled that one man can thwart the will of Congress. Um, so, uh, and I, I, I have no idea how we move forward from that, except the courts have now ordered them to move forward. And so we hope, we hope they do soon. So any other statements or questions? I'll take questions in a minute. I wanna bring, because it's very relevant since these gentlemen are all from Nye County. Um, I have a, I grew up in West Texas near the corner of where New Mexico meets Texas in the southeast corner. Um, and I'm extremely familiar with what goes on in Mexico because my, I know a lot of people in Los Alamos National Lab, which is up north of Santa Fe. For many, many years, the government wanted to put in, and you heard it alluded to this morning, called WIPS, Waste Isolation Pilot Project. State of New Mexico fought it and fought it and fought it till 
because again, the government was just gonna bring this waste in. It wasn't gonna give the local people anything. Finally, federal government said, okay, we'll give you a bone. You know what the bone was? A bypass from the no northern two 285, coming from the north, out of the north, going south, around Santa Fe, and then cut over to t Highway 25, which is the one that goes on down to Albuquerque. So they built that little bypass, probably cost the government, uh, let's say, 30 or 40 million dollars, so it was like a bribe. Then what happened with WHIPS? They opened it. It was supposed to be for medical and uh, military waste. Not one drop of, mil of military, uh, not one drop of civilian medical nuclear waste has ever gone into WHIPS. It's just, it's just the military and that's it. And it's really kind of sad. So I think that, that the people in Nye County are legitimately leery of anything our government does. So I think that's that's my last comment. During the course of the uh, of my employment with the county, uh, like I said, when the site was designated in 2002, and as you, I suspect all of you know, Nevada had the opportunity to veto the decision, the, the recommendation to select Yucca Mountain. And, and that failed, the Congress said it's going there, and we, I don't really, uh, th as far as the Screw Nevada bill uh, <laughs> and the comments that were made this morning about the suitability of Yucca Mountain as one of the three finalists, it was scientifically uh, supportable and they made, they ended up with the right decision for all the wrong reasons and the reasons were political. But suffice to say that uh, back to the uh, uh, 2002 decision, Nye County, up until that point in time, was neutral in the context that this, if, if this was going to happen, the, the existing county commissions were well aware that those decisions were going to be made by others elsewhere. And that is, in fact, what transpired. Once, this, once the site was designated, the county then, with the assistance of, of uh, oversight funding uh, provided by the department from the Nuclear Waste Trust Fund, the took on uh, an appropriate scientific uh, staff and technical capable people to help uh, put together because the view of the county commission at that point was if this is going to happen to us, we need to be prepared for it and make it as successful as possible. And that was the work that was in progress all along the way. During the course of, of the appropriations process over the years, money was typically taken out of the appropriations process by the same uh, majority leader along the way. And the Department of Energy actually came to depend on and leverage the science that Nye County was doing to advance the license application. So when the rug completely got pulled on the in, in FY 2010 uh, by the project being deemed unworkable. Uh, if you, re it, for the matter of history, the Secretary of Energy originally said it was, uh, it was uh, scientifically and technically inadequate when challenged on that. Just the opposite was true and then the rhetoric all changed and we now find ourselves with this political football bouncing it back and forth. The facts remain that this material does exist. We're making more of it to the tune of 2,000 to 2,400 tons of it a year. It's going to go someplace. It's going to be dealt with. And uh, Nye County, once the site was designated, said if it's going to happen, we want to do it as well as possible. Let me just follow up on one thing he said about the, who he was talking about was for and against it. It was Stephen Chu, who was the director of Lawrence Berkeley Lab, and I've had my dealings with him on another, other issues. Um, he has a Nobel Prize in physics but for theoretical physics. When he was the director of Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, he was 100% in favor of nuclear power. As Soon as he became Secretary of Energy, mysteriously, he, I mean, like overnight, he had a magical revelation that nuclear power is bad and we gotta quit it. Uh, go figure. You don't think politics played any major in that? What? Yeah. What's politics? <laughs> Should have nothing to do with it. Any, any questions? It's riveting.
you help me out, would you? Let me try it right up there. There we go. Can you hear? Okay. I got on the internet last night because I knew about our meeting today, and I remembered some things I'd read in the newspapers previously, and I just grabbed one that the New York Times put out back in uh, uh, August of this year, and uh, a lot of sources are not as liberal as the New York Times, so I was interested in what they'd have to say, and uh, they're talking about that they got a the commission got a well justified rebuke for flouting the law, and that uh, they're carrying out pledges to scuttle this facility made by President Obama while campaigning for the presidency in 2008. And Senator Reid, a Democratic Nevada and the majority leader, who has ferociously ferociously opposed the site for years, says. Uh, when led by Mr. Reed's former aides, they shut down the licensing program, they dismantled the computer system, they took all the, not only turned them off, they, they scrambled everything and ruined everything, all that information is in there, and they, uh, th on which the project depended. They removed certain findings from the reports, any, positive findings that they found that they didn't want, they removed those from the reports. And then the, the commission could not abort the licensing review, they said, uh, the, the, court, the court said, but they did it anyway. And it says uh, enough to, c they had enough money still to finish the thing so that they could have got a, a, a report out like they was wanting to get but it had previously been suppressed. So they just said, we spend decades and billions of dollars in studying yucca, and they were just saying how somebody can go in and derail everything for political reasons. And the only reason I can think of, I remember Howard Hughes when he lived in Las Vegas up on the top with those long toenails and fingernails. He didn't want anything to do with nuclear because he lived there for one thing, he didn't even like germs, let alone nuclear, and then the casinos aren't anxious to see any activity nearby that uh, great thing, so what it boils down to is none of our senators and representatives can count on getting any money from them for re-election if they're not against Yucca Mountain, so that's it. All this stuff we're doing and you're doing to do all good, the right things, if they're not going to pay attention to it and scuttle it, I'd say we're going to have to do something on election day. Thank you. That, that being the case from a historical perspective, in 1974, a joint session of the Nevada legislature asked to be examined as part of the repository program. And that, that uh, reversal stayed in place then uh, Dr. Vogel could talk to this more than I could, but when in 1987, when the uh, when the amendment was done and the uh, we quit looking at a second repository, the sense of unfairness to the East Coast and the West Coast, since most of the reactors are in the East Coast, uh, was was caused to be upset, and uh, it's all part of the bigger history, and it's where we find ourselves now. And then from that point on, public office in Nevada, in my opinion, it was a, it was a litmus test to be a, a opposed to Yucca Mountain to get elected. Which is a shame. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for coming. Um, so politicians being politicians, mm -hmm. it seems to me that the only way you change views is to change public opinion. Yes. And to change public opinion, it seems to me that the primary concern is safety. You can't get to the economic discussion about jobs or lower energy cost or um, green energy until you get past safety. Right. And uh, so we have a recent event, and it's not just safety of repository or recycling, it starts with the production of energy. And we have a recent event in Japan Mm -hmm. That scared the pants off a lot of people, sure. to use a bad expression, I guess. 
So um, I'm curious if you all are aware of anything that's being done to either educate the public about what really happened in Japan and either maybe it wasn't as catastrophic as it seemed or how that would contrast with how energy would be developed today and a newer facility where maybe you wouldn't have the same risks that they apparently experienced when the power went out there so that you could start to educate people about the safety issue because my belief is until we get past the safety issue I don't see how we convince people that you know 10,000 more jobs are worth a radioactive nightmare so and that is perception I understand that but that's where we are let me uh, go there have only been three major accidents one was Three Mile Island nobody was hurt or killed it melted the reactor down the second Three Mile Island reactor is still operational secondly the Russian reactor it melted down too but the Russians said to heck with you we don't need a containment vessel even with that they think at most a thousand casualties mainly due to the thyroid because the radioactive iodine gets in now let's come to the last one Fukushima the General Electric engineers when they sold the reactor to the Japanese told them not to put it on the coast but the Japanese if you know anything about the Japanese they're 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 very very um, they probably have the, the narrowest genetic code of any country in the world that means even if you're from Korea uh, they've been Korean families living in Japan for 300 years and weren't allowed to vote or have any say. That's just the way the Japanese are. Okay, that's their privilege. The Japanese refused to listen to the General Electric engineers, and they put, oh, we're going to put it on the coast. <coughs> if you know, and, and, and this was known by General Electric, they knew it quite well. The reason they told them to do that is if there was ever an accident, let's see, the, Japan is on the um, island, you know, the Ring of Fire <coughs> on the Pacific. If you go onto the USGS site, um, you can get it through the judge report or other things. You get, there's about 800 earthquakes a week on the Ring of Fire. Most of them are quite small, but every once in a while it gets ones that gets up to the eight to nine range, and then it's not so small, and you get tsunamis. What happens is the only time that there's a problem with a reactor or these reactor elements is if salt water gets into it. Fresh water, the fuel pellets that are coming out of reactors today in the United States and in most places in the world, where are they stored? In swimming pools when they first come out. They're still in plain old water. The water is so clean and it's so, intimate. you can drink the water out of those things. It's that clean, there's no problem with that. But don't try to put salt water. Salt water reacts with so much stuff. It's so corrosive and so toxic, that's what caused the problem. So if the Japanese had just listened to the General Electric engineers, we would have never had Fukushima. And so all we need to do is go around and make sure that any place that has a reactor near the seacoast, it's high enough so that if there is a, a tsunami or just big waves, it doesn't get into where the, the nuclear elements are stored. That's all you have to do. So that, that, that's the simple solution to the lady's question about uh, Fukushima. I'm, I'm a general citizen. I'm elected official, I know, but I'm, I had to tell somebody that. She wants, she, she wants to know how do we get the public? How do we get the public to uh, uh, see this stuff? It's, I think it's very hard with the internet. I don't know how many people I've spoken to about Three Mile Island. But when I first moved to Pahrump, I met a gentleman named Ed Hansen who actually in the early, late 50s, early 60s built devices. And he was my first uh, mentor in to things nuclear. And uh, he worked, uh, he worked for that company or whoever it was that went in there to Three Mile Island. He gave me some really good information. But I still talk to people who live in our area who insist that you know all the deaths around there happened and all these people are sick. And I tell them no material was released. Well, we saw those clouds. That's steam. Okay. So there's going to be, and and there is a very well-organized group of people who are out there telling us all oh, we're all going to die if you get any radiation. We're getting radiation right now. Depends on what it is. Is this stuff dangerous? Yes, it could be. It's, it is dangerous if you, if you don't take precautions. 
but the precautions taken in transporting nuclear material and at uh, at uh, nuclear reactors is amazing. I mean, it's it's there's redundancy after redundancy. Um, as far as I know, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, uh, 50, 60 years they've been transporting nuclear material around the country. Has there ever been a spill of nuclear material in transportation? Because I, I, I haven't found any. I mean, in, in my research, of course, I can go on the internet and find, the, find that we did never landed on the moon, so that must be true too. Um, so it's really hard to combat that. And that's, and that's Nye County's stance has been for years now, is let's hear the science. $15 billion, $15 billion in 30 years. For, for God's sake, we put a man on the moon in nine years. In 30 years, we can't build a repository, you know? And it's only really, it's, it's not really the safety issues or anything else, it's politics. And how does an energy secretary, a cabinet position, ignore Congress and get away with it? As, uh, you know, I know this is supposed to be transportation and safety, but really, and I appreciate this, that, you know, we need the science and we need people to understand the science, but it's politics that have messed this up. And even with the uh, President uh, Obama's first, uh, and Cash can tell you about that, his uh, science statement, Cash, President's statement on science. On, on March 9th, uh, 2009, maybe 2010, the, the uh, executive order for scientific integrity was, was issued by the White House, and it basically said that science and technology, uh, political decisions should not, uh, must take into a full account the science and technologies associated with, uh, with uh, activities so that they're based on fact and not emotion. And that policy is not being followed. In fact, that's the specific policy that that was cited uh, during the hearings when the uh, when Secretary Chu originally said that the site was scientifically technically unable, and they found out that it was that wasn't the case. That it was quote unworkable, and and that's the political unworkable. Right. And so poli politics should not trump science. Science should lead the way. And soon after that uh, presidential whatever it is, uh, directive, that presidential directive, the energy secretary decided he would ignore the law. And politics has since messed this whole thing up. Yeah, I'd like to point out that Mr. Chu, the only thing he's ever done in his life is study something. Uh, so it's not just getting scientists, but it's getting practical engineers and people who know how to solve problems. I mean, this guy, uh, no matter what you throw at him, he's always going to want to conduct another study. The guy's a jerk. It's time to flush him out along with the rest of them. Yeah, Stan, he's been gone for about a year. Uh, uh, Secretary Chu uh, did sign a document at one time in his career supporting Yucca Mountain. But uh, like the uh, gentleman says, you know, when he, once he got to be Energy Secretary, he forgot all about it. Another point about this dangers of this, as soon as you answer a question, they're gonna come up with another remark. Just like they took away silicone implants and proved that they were bad and they weren't. And Alar that put on apples was supposed to cause cancer, it doesn't cause anything. But once they get the news media going and they, they come up with a new thing every time and if all else fails, they're going to find a little lizard or a little snail down there in the Yucca Mountain and say, we can't do anything or going to might destroy that, that titmouse or whatever the hell they come yeah. up with next. Mm -hmm. So if you listen to them or pay attention to them, it's just going to drive you crazy because they're trying to, everything they've done on this uh, politically is all a distraction. They're, they're happy to get a new distraction. If there's a killing, oh boy, we're going to stop the guns, and if we do this, they got a new distraction. Every other week, a big crisis. And uh, just to get our mind off of things like what happened down at, with our ambassador. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank you. Um, I want to, since you brought up safety issues, I want to, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a number of you know all this, but I'm going to, for those of you who don't know, I'm going to just review the safety issues with radiation and how little it is. In terms of for radiation exposure, I'm not talking about particular isotopes. So, 
You have something like strontium-90, which is a byproduct of nuclear reactors. If you were to accidentally ingest it, it goes in your bones. It's just like, it's chemically, strontium is the same as calcium. So it goes and sits in your bones for the rest of your life. You can never get rid of it. So that's dangerous. We all agree to that. But in terms of just straight radiation exposure, if I put a radiation source in the middle of the room, and I sat there, and I measured it, um, what are you allowed as a radiation worker working for the Department of Energy or anybody? You're allowed a maximum of five rem per year. Now, I'm not going to try to define what the rem what do you get from the rocks in the background living here in Nevada? It's 0.3 rem. So you're allowed to, to get, you know, 15 times that as a radiation worker. Now, where do we get most of our data on how harmful it is? Well, to get, if you get 100 rem in one dose, 100 rem, all you get is a little blood damage, and your body repairs it fairly shortly, as long as you don't get another dose instantaneously. Okay, how do we know all this? Well, there are these, these two little events back in 1945, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Again, a, we kind of got lucky because the Japanese people are so genetically the same. It's not like being in America where we have people in Mars, so you, it's hard to judge. But almost all our data on how dangerous radiation is for, in relatively high doses came from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, period, end of discussion. So we don't need to do those. They've already been done. Those measurements were done a long time ago in the follow-up. So the doses that we're talking about, even for a radiation worker, no big deal. And I'll fin I'm going to finalize it with one last. In my entire career working with radiation, and I've worked with some pretty high dose stuff, you know, with shielding boxes and all this stuff, I think I've gotten about 15 rem. So only, you know, I, I've never got that much. I took, I, I, had, a, I had a thyroid problem. So I took a radi radioactive iodine tablet. I got 35 rem from that one radioactive iodine tablet internally in my thyroid, which of course wiped it out in a couple of weeks. That, so I got over twice as much from one medical treatment than I ever got, and it was it was a good medical treatment. It made my life better. So you know the same thing goes with us. So radiation is not necessarily bad. It depends on how much you get. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. According to uh, Congressman Simkus, he believes that if the vote was taken today in both houses, uh, it would pass on Yucca. Mm -hmm. So the problem is not uh, making sure it's safe. We all know it is. The problem is making the people understand it mm -hmm. and putting pressure on Harry. And the only way I know how to do that is with a PR program. Now, Harry just recently got five million, no, half a million, no, what is it? I think, well, it's a million dollars, I think it is, uh, to work against Yucca Mountain. And he, that's taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not gonna get that with the governor. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is raise the money and bombard the hell out of all the sources of news in Nevada. Because if we can swing the public opinion in Nevada against Harry and against what he's doing, we've got it resolved. And I think that's the next step, to get a PR program that we'd all contribute to voluntarily. I, I think that's a, that's a very good idea. The governor put, uh, forward another uh, five million to fight Yucca Mountain. Uh, he, his, uh, uh, his advisors wanted to go up to nine million. He stripped, uh, he stripped 10 million out of uh, economic development at the same time. And this is the biggest economic development thing uh, that would hit, uh, you know, Nevada. Um, and I've asked for years why, why there hasn't been some counter campaign. And I've been told the nuclear industry didn't, you know, was kind of afraid to, to go there. Um, they would be the best people to help fund this, I think. So, um. To go to your point about public officials, mm -hmm. Commissioner Shinhoffen over there signed out a letter on behalf of Nye County that went to every county commissioner in the state of Nevada. That letter basically said that uh, it goes to what Mr. Shimkus had to say this morning when in the July 31st meeting he suggested maybe we ought to just offer uh, Nevada that $5.6 billion. Up to this point, 
Dan can speak to it himself, but he's gotten he's he's not gotten any calls from anybody. He's had to follow up on a couple times, but at the county level, the county commissioners, the political process that you're talking about, and the fact sheet that some of you saw here was all given to him, plus a draft resolution. And it looks like, uh, besides the counties that are contiguous to Nye County, which are Esmeralda, Mineral, Lander, Churchill, uh, Eureka, White Pine, and, and Clark and Lincoln, the those counties of those counties, seven of them said we'd like to see the safety evaluation report be issued and license resume. Now, as far and two more, Humboldt County and perhaps Douglas County may join as well, which would be nine of those counties. So at the grassroots level, getting a response, it's not on anybody, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, the local lo, uh, county commissioner level people are inclined to do that. Nobody's leaning on them. I don't know of anybody out here in, besides Dan's a commissioner, but uh, if, if, if our local community level officials don't care, it's very hard to change public opinion and that would be the purpose and uh, that's where we started. Yeah, and, and real briefly before I let you speak, but you had mentioned if there was a vote uh, in the House or Senate, the House has voted numerous times to fund Yucca Mountain and move it forward on a bipartisan basis, very bipartisan. So when our Senator Reid says, the Republicans have a fixation with Yucca Mountain. That's not true. The House has voted, and he will, he won't allow a vote to fund Yucca Mountain to come on the Senate. So that's our big blockage, sir. Yes, I Dwight Millard. Uh, I just have a couple of comments, and one uh, dovetails on one of the comments that you made earlier about World War II, and one's on the ladies' comments about safety. Uh, personally, and I worked at the test site in the late '60s and '70s and I work for a company, and we'll discuss it, but the word nuclear in of itself is a perceptional problem. Mm -hmm. And somebody ought to just start talking about something else. And doctor, it's up to you to come up with a better word. That's your job. We don't want, it's okay, you got an, wait, you got an assignment. Yeah. So before these guys ballyhoo me and you for changing the name, I want you to know that I work for Lawrence Radiation Laboratory. Right? Yeah. And what happened to them? Tell tell the people what happened to them. To what, wait, wait, Lawrence wait. Radiation Laboratory. Oh. Lawrence Livermore National Lab. What happened? We changed the name for some reason, and it was probably due to the town of Livermore, said we don't want to be associated with radiation, so let's call it Lawrence Livermore Lab. And I'll, all I'm pointing out to you is that if I was sitting in a truck and you had the big nuclear designation on it and big signs that says dangerous, nuclear contents, it, it's, a, it's a perception. Mm -hmm. And we need to overcome the perception. And we were working several years ago on a project and we got a new board member and we told him this is our goals in life and he said, what are you doing about it? And we all looked at each other and said nothing, that's just our goal. Nye County's goal is to get this product going and I would ask two questions. What's your budget for a positive, proactive campaign? And have you approached the federal government to say, we would like to lease it and we'll operate it? I mean, uh, that yeah. sounds bizarre, yeah. but I'm saying it takes that kind of an action, in my opinion, yeah. for us to start doing something on the pro level. And I know you guys are working pro, but I'm just saying, are we saying we can do the impossible? Let's just go do it. Yeah, what, uh, what we're doing positively is, uh, uh, like Cash mentioned, my first month in office, I. Uh, penned a resolution with their help. They called on the NRC and DOE to move forward with the licensing process. We've got now seven counties. We soon hope to have nine, and we're going to move from there. We're going to get a majority of counties on board with this because most of the commissioners understand, uh, which goes to your second part, that the state has continued to rake the counties to balance their budget. So the unfunded mandates that we're under, we don't have a budget to work positively. So we're doing what we can with the few funds we have. And uh, one of the things that's attractive to these commissioners when I talk to them is the, the funds that Yucca Mountain, Yucca Mountain would bring in would easily cover those unfunded mandates and balance <laughs> all the state's budgets. So we, uh, uh, and did you come up with the word yet? Uh, I ha well, uh, I, I would make a comment about that. Transitioning the name uh, nuclear is going to be a difficulty, but it probably won't be Miley Cyrus. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> la one last comment, uh, just a kind of a side story, kind of in a humorous note. Um, Short story. A faculty member at Berkeley that I, she was, been most of her career at Los Alamos, and then she became a Berkeley faculty member in the mid-1980s. She had a big sign on her door for years and years, and I, I was at a meeting recently and saw her this last few months ago. And she, anyway, she used to have a big sign on her door that said, anyone that says nuclear, not allowed in here. And, and so I thought, well, we could just change that. If you don't believe in nuclear in Nevada, we can leave, get, kick you out of Nevada. That would include Harry. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we're going to move on and do the next, uh, well, uh, I'm changing this, this uh, schedule a little bit, and, I, and I'm going to have John Dunn come up and do his presentation for Nevadans for Carbon Free. I think we can address more of these questions on the full panel discussion immediately following. I think John's going to run about 20 minutes, so it'll be kind of short. So let's take three minutes for a changeover and then uh, have right at it. Because my, I, I don't know about you guys, when I get into these things, I'm pretty intensive about it. I, I'm not, I don't care about lunch and dinner and things like that. But at any rate, uh, let's do three minutes and then get back at it. Okay, folks? <laughs>